In this video, you'll learn about one of the best places to find wholesalers and factories in the world, the Canton Fair. And the Canton Fair is one of the largest international trade shows in the world. And I'll teach you how to navigate the fair and give you my exact itinerary as well. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. Every other year, my wife and I make a trip to Guangzhou, China to attend the Canton Fair. Now, if you've never heard of the Canton Fair, it is the largest wholesale supplier trade show in the world where thousands of vendors and buyers attend. Now, here are some statistics for just the past year. There were 25,000 exhibitors. There were 191,000 overseas buyers. There were over 60,000 booths. And the exhibition space is 1.185 million square meters or about 45 square miles in area. Now, to give you an idea of the magnitude of the fair, a football field is 6,400 square yards which means that the Canton Fair is the equivalent of almost 218 football fields in area. Crazy, right? Not only that, but the fair is so large that it's split into three phases. Phase one covers electronics, household electrical appliances, machinery, lighting equipment, hardware and tools, vehicles and spare parts, building materials, and chemical products. Phase two covers consumer products, decorations, goods, and gifts. Phase three, covers textiles and garments, shoes, office supplies, cases and bags, recreation products, medicines, medical devices, and health products. Now, because we sell handkerchiefs and linens, we typically attend phase three, which I believe is actually the smallest of all the phases. But make sure you attend the appropriate phase depending on what you sell. The Canton Fair takes place twice per year during the spring and fall and is spread over three phases over the course of two weeks. So once again, make sure you attend the phase that is most appropriate for your business. Now, typically phase one is usually April 15th to the 19th of the year and October 15th to the 19th. Phase two is usually right after. So typically it's April 23rd and October 23rd. And then finally, phase three is usually May 1st and October 31st. Now the Canton Fair takes place during the spring and autumn in Guangzhou, China. And specifically, it is held in the Guangzhou International Convention and Exhibition Center, which is located at 4935 plus J5 Haizhou, Guangzhou, Guangdong, China. It's a lot to take in, but everyone knows where it is over there because it's so big. Now, the red circle here is the Canton Fair, and the three blue circles are the most convenient hotels that you can stay at when attending the fair. However, I actually don't recommend staying at these hotels at all because they are super expensive. The West End Paizo, for example, can run you up to $700 a night, and the hotel food is really expensive. Keep in mind that the Canton Fair is located in the middle of nowhere, and there are actually not a lot of restaurants and things to do outside of the convention center, which is why I like to stay about 20 minutes away in the heart of the city. So here are my recommended hotels in Guangzhou, China. And here are the hotels that I've stayed at personally that I highly recommend. Now, the Good International Hotel is located at 153 Tianhe Road, and in case you're curious, the street is pronounced Tianhe like Sky River in Chinese. Now, what I like about this hotel is it's right next to a high-end shopping mall with an excellent food court and restaurants. So you can literally just walk across the street and have access to shopping and good food. Plus, it's very safe. In addition, the hotel offers daily shuttles back and forth from the Canton Fair, and it is very reasonably priced. The fairgrounds are literally 10 minutes away. Now, the Aloft Hotel, on the other hand, is a Western-style hotel that offers an excellent breakfast buffet and is located near two high-end shopping malls as well. And similar to the Good International Hotel, they offer free back-and-forth shuttle service to the fair. Highly recommended. So how much does it cost to attend the fair, and is it worth going? Well, attending the Canton Fair is free. However, you do have to get a visa to visit China, and you have to pay for airfare and hotel. So all told, your expenses will probably not exceed 3 to 4K. But is it worth going? Absolutely. If you've been doing your product sourcing via Alibaba, you probably already know that going back and forth between vendors is extremely time consuming. First off, you can't speak face to face, so you're forced to use email and chat programs to communicate. And second of all, you have to wait to have samples made and shipped to you, which can take several weeks. However, when you attend the Canton Fair, you can easily engage with hundreds of Chinese vendors in the span of just a couple days. And the best part is that all the vendors will have sample products in their booths that you can touch and feel for quality. In fact, it's not uncommon to place large bulk orders for products right at the fair, and you can get pricing and availability in a matter of minutes. In addition, the face-to-face -face communication with your vendor is priceless in terms of establishing trust and rapport, which makes the whole sourcing process infinitely smoother and faster. 
Now to provide you with some context, during our last trip to the Canton Fair, we came home with almost 15 new suppliers. And if we were to try to find 15 quality suppliers using Alibaba, it would take forever. So how do I attend the fair? Well, in order to attend the fair, you first have to register on the Canton Fair website. And after you register, you will receive an invitation which you must use to get a visa into China. Now, technically you should get a business visa, but you can also get a tourist visa, which does not require that you show an invitation to the fair. But overall, a Chinese visa doesn't cost that much. It's about 160 bucks or so. And I recommend that you purchase the 10 year visa if you ever plan on going more than once. Because there's only a handful of places around the country that can issue you a visa in person, I actually recommend that you use a China visa service in your area. Now the visa process doesn't take that long, but please allow up to three weeks to get it. And then once you have your visa, you can buy a plane ticket to China and grab your name badge at the fair. And in terms of flights, you should book early and fly into the Guangzhou International Airport. Now this past year, my wife and I booked too late and the airline tickets were ridiculously priced. And so what we did is we actually flew into Hong Kong instead and then took a train from Hum Hum Station to the East Guangzhou Railroad Station. And this actually saved us about $600 per person. Now, a lot of you guys are probably scared to go to the fair if you don't speak English. Well, this past year, I actually took my friend Tony with me to China, and she actually doesn't speak a lick of Chinese. However, she managed to navigate the fair by herself just fine. And in fact, I recorded a podcast episode with her about our experiences at the Canton Fair that you can see below this video. But in general, every booth at the Canton Fair will have at least one English speaking employee that you can communicate with. And if you stick with the standard lingo of e-commerce, you should be just fine. Taking taxis and getting around the city outside the Canton Fair, however, can be a different story, which brings me to some funny stories to share with you. So first off, I have this love-hate relationship with China. Now on one hand, the food is incredible and the prices are pretty inexpensive by American standards. But what I hate about China is that every time I go, I feel like everyone is out to cheat me and make an extra buck at my expense. And for a communist country, China is one of the most cutthroat and capitalistic places that I've ever visited. And in just four short days, I got ripped off many times while I was there. And here's just some tips that I put together for navigating the Canton Fair so this does not happen to you. So tip number one, have your hotel name written down in Chinese for taxi drivers. On our first day out, we pretty much went straight to the Canton Fair after checking into our hotel and all was good. We took a taxi to the fair and visited a number of vendors that we had scheduled appointments with that day. But on the way home, I realized that I forgot to have the concierge write down the name and address of the hotel in Chinese for the taxi ride home. No big deal, I thought. After all, I could speak a little Chinese, and I had the name and address of the hotel written down in English. But I could not have been more wrong. The taxi driver could not read a lick of English, and he had no clue where the heck our hotel was. So for the first 10 minutes, the taxi driver was literally driving aimlessly as Jen and I frantically tried to look up our hotel on Google to get the Chinese address. But bad idea because Google is blocked in China. Even the most basic Google search takes like 15 minutes, and I swear that each and every search query was being actively blocked by the Great Firewall of China. Google Maps didn't work either. It also didn't help that the taxi reminded me of the backseat of a police car, bars and all. In case you're wondering, I've never been arrested before. Meanwhile, I'm getting desperate, so I start aimlessly yelling different versions of the street name in my poor man's Americanized Chinese, and after a couple of iterations, I must have struck gold because the next thing I know, the taxi driver stops the car right smack in the middle of the road in heavy traffic. And because we're essentially blocking the entire street, everyone starts honking at us from behind. Now the sound of 10 horns blasting all at once was loud and deafening, but it actually didn't bother the driver one bit. And instead, as if there weren't a dozen angry Chinese drivers behind us, the driver busts out his GPS and starts typing something in. Now seeing the GPS unit prompts me to start asking him in Chinese, do you know where to go? Do you know where the hotel is? Can you call the hotel? But then there was dead silence. And after a couple more minutes of horn blastage, the driver starts driving again with his eyes glued to the GPS and not the road. And for the remainder of the trip, he does not say a single word to me, even though I keep asking him where the hell he's going. And at this point, my wife and I contemplate getting out of the taxi, like literally jumping out while it's moving. But we realize it would be stuck in the middle of nowhere. And then finally, after 30 minutes of driving, the fare is only 10 minutes away, by the way. He pulls up in front of our hotel. Now, the meter is more than double the cost of what we paid to get to the fare, but we didn't care. Clearly, he took a circuitous route home and scared the crap out of us at the same time. And incidentally, this was not the only time we got jacked by a taxi driver. On a different occasion, we had a driver who started his meter at twice the amount it was supposed to be when he picked us up, and we couldn't really do anything about it. All right, tip number two. 
beware of counterfeit money and only use reputable bank ATMs. Now, the last time we went to the Canton Fair, we actually exchanged US dollars for Chinese cash before we got there. But this time we decided to wing it and use the ATM machine once we got into China. Now, normally there's actually plenty of ATMs at the train station, but for some reason, our ATM cards would not work at the train station ATMs. So we were forced to use a foreign money exchange booth. Now you would think that a money exchange place in the middle of a busy train station would be legit, but it turns out that these punks gave us a bunch of counterfeit Chinese bills without our knowledge. So for the remainder of our trip, restaurants and taxis kept looking suspiciously at the money we gave them, and quite a few of them would not accept our money and asked us to use different bills to pay. Meanwhile, the entire time we had no idea that the money was counterfeit, and we couldn't understand why people weren't accepting our bills. And it was only after trying to exchange our money back to US dollars at the airport did they tell us that our money was fake. Incidentally, did you know that trying to exchange counterfeit money is illegal? When we tried to exchange the money for US dollars, the foreign exchange had to call the cops and we actually had to fill out a police report. And it's a good thing that we got to the airport early for our flight because otherwise we would have missed it. Okay, Canton Fair tip number three, how to access Google and Facebook in China. Now the entire taxi incident above could have been avoided had I signed up for a cell phone service that will allow me access to Google in China. Now when I go to China, I use Verizon's travel pass. So basically for 10 bucks a day, you can access the data service in China as if you're in the US and it works really well. The last time I was at the Canton Fair, I had full access to Google, Facebook, and none of it was blocked. For just 10 bucks a day, it's a no brainer. Now the best part is you're only charged on the days that you actually use your device. Now there are data use limitations, however, and you might get throttled. So before you go to China, just make sure you check the Verizon website for the details regarding your plan. Tip number four, navigating the streets of China. Do not use private drivers. When you get off at the airport or at the train station, you will be accosted by very nice Chinese people offering to get you a taxi. But in reality, they're leading you to private drivers that will cost you 10x as much to reach your destination. Do not trust these people. Do not trust any non-branded foreign exchange either. Even though you might be at the airport or a major train station, a lot of times the business establishments that you first see will be out to make a quick buck. This was the first time that we'd used a random foreign exchange because we were exhausted and our ATM cards didn't work, but just make sure you get some money before you arrive. You also have to be aggressive. I've been to China several times in the past decade and people don't have any manners. There's no real concept of lines and people will often butt in front of you at any time. So while at the front of a taxi line at the train station, some random Chinese dude walked up out of nowhere and tried to steal my taxi. And at that point, I was just fed up with getting counterfeit bills and getting ripped off by taxi drivers. Then I gave the guy a shove, pushed him aside and told him to get in the back of the line. And I swear, the guy looked at me like I was crazy and that I was the one at fault. Make sure you use your hotel concierge. Always have your hotel concierge write down the address and the name of your hotel in Chinese on a card before you leave. Also have the concierge write down any nearby landmarks in case the taxi driver doesn't know where to go. All right, tip number five, where to hire a translator. Now various importing blogs often recommend going to the fair with the translator, but just for the record, my wife and I have never needed a translator and it's got nothing to do with the fact that I'm Chinese. In fact, I don't really try to use my Chinese when I'm there for fear that people might actually try to respond to me in Chinese. One time I tried to speak Chinese to a vendor and my accent was so bad that he replied in English. Every booth has someone that speaks English and I don't think that a translator is necessary. Now having a translator is helpful, but not required. And if you insist on having one, there's a booth in the lobby where you can get one. Tip number six, here are some universal terms and acronyms that you must know. And in the event that you happen to get a vendor who doesn't speak a lick of English, almost all of them understand the universal language of business. Here are three terms that you need to know. MOQ stands for minimum order quantity, but everyone uses MOQ. Price, when asking for a price, make sure it's in your home currency and not an RMB. And then always ask for the lead times when you're discussing products. Sometimes a vendor will have certain goods in stock. Oftentimes they will have to make things from scratch. And in general, the minimum order quantities for most vendors at the fair will be quite high if you need to have custom products made. And if you're just starting out, you might wanna ask about their stock items. Stock items are goods that they have in stock or produce on a regular basis. And the MOQ for stock items is usually much less. Tip number seven, know where you're going and plan ahead. The Canton Fair is enormous. Think of the largest trade show that you've ever been to and multiply that by 20. It took my wife and I three full days to cover the textile portion of the fair alone, and there's no way that we would have covered the entire show even if we wanted to. If you do decide to attend, make sure you map out which areas you want to hit ahead of time. Otherwise, you're just going to wander aimlessly and become overwhelmed by the sheer size of the fairgrounds. Tip number eight, be careful with samples. 
The great thing about attending the fair is that all the vendors will have lots of samples for you to go through in their booth. And having all the vendors congregated in a single location means that you can cover hundreds of vendors in a short period of time. Now compare that to going through Alibaba and having samples mailed internationally back and forth, and you'll soon realize that attending the Canton Fair will save you an enormous amount of time and headache. I do have a couple of comments on samples that you should definitely be aware of. Sometimes the samples that you see in the vendor's booth may not be indicative of the final product you may receive. In fact, oftentimes the samples are just surplus items from a prior run of orders. So for example, a student in my Create a Profitable Online Store course asked me to visit a vendor at the fair to look at a product she was interested in selling. And when I sent her a picture, it was completely different than the product she was expecting. And the reason was because the vendor had a bunch of these products left over from a production run where his client passed away before the delivery could actually be made. So as a result, the vendor was just selling these items for super cheap and in much lower quantities. Some vendors have stock that is many years old and they just want to get rid of it, so just beware. All right, tip number nine, make sure you come prepared with the following items. Make sure you carry business cards with you along with a digital camera and a notepad. Here's how my wife and I keep track of the vendors we meet and the products we're interested in. And oftentimes we'll go to a booth and take pictures of the products we want to source along with the vendor's business card. And then we just staple the business card to a little notebook and write down all the MOQs and pricing information. And then afterwards we email the vendor with all the products that we're interested in and get a formal quote. Okay, so outside of getting accused of printing fake Chinese money and getting ripped off by multiple taxis, we actually had a very successful trip. We met with all of our existing vendors and found many new ones to source new products for our store. And here are just some random photos that we took at the fair. Now, before they let you enter a bunch of Chinese people in hazmat suits, make sure that you're not sick. And if you're from certain designated countries, they force you to show them proof that you've had your immunizations of polio and other diseases done before you can enter. Here's a picture of one of the Chinese soldiers manning the door. And as much as I wanted to give the guy a hug and make a move, my wife didn't want me to get arrested. Here's a picture of a super long corridor that connects all the buildings of the fair. The hallway is so long that they have golf carts shuttling people back and forth. They also have escalators in the middle if you don't want to wait in line. Here's a map of the entire Canton Fair for phase three. Here's one of the boxes on the map that is probably equivalent to half a football field. In other words, there's no way that you're gonna be able to get through the entire thing. And here's what one of the buildings looks like on the inside. All right, so bottom line, should you go? Well, if you value your time and you know that you want to source your goods from China, then going to the Canton Fair is actually a no-brainer. Now, you might think that using Alibaba is good enough, but if you've ever done business via Alibaba before, you've probably noticed how time-consuming and tedious the entire process can be. First, you got to establish contact, then you got to communicate, then you got to have samples shipped across the world, then you have to evaluate the samples and iterate. It's a pain in the butt. So by going to the fair, you can bypass this stage altogether and have access to thousands of vendors who are all congregating at the same place. So hopefully this video has dispelled some of the myths of traveling to China for the Canton Fair, and good luck with your product sourcing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now if you like what you saw, there's actually a lot more where that came from if you subscribe to my channel below. And if you are interested in learning how to sell physical products online, then click over here and take my free six day mini course where I'll walk you through everything that you need to know to get started in e-commerce. Thanks for watching.